Prime Minister Trudeau's flagship inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls is turning into, well, a bit of a bureaucratic dumpster fire, like I guess all things the Liberals do. I mean, why should this one thing be any different? Now, a CBC article, Credit Where It's Due, reveals that the inquiry has become a bit of a make-work project for government bureaucrats and Liberal-connected cronies who like to eat expensive lunches and travel the country on the taxpayer dime. You just know this is bad if the CBC doesn't like what the Liberals are doing here. The inquiry itself, though, is having very little interaction with the families of missing and murdered women and girls, and those families who do want to get in touch with the inquiry are finding it nearly impossible to do so, with the inquiry hiding behind a series of dead-end phone numbers and email addresses that don't seem to have anybody on the other side. I mean, aren't there even people manning these numbers and email addresses? Well, you might think so given the amount the Commission has already spent on administration. According to that same CBC article as of March 23rd, the Commission had spent about 10% or $5 million of its total $53 million budget. And of that, 29% was spent on salaries and 71%, about $3.6 million was spent on travel costs and administration. Bureaucrats, travel, and food. That's what the Liberals think is going to help get these families the answers they need. Oh, that is, of course, if answers for the bereaved families were even on the agenda of the inquiry, but they aren't. According to the Frequently Asked Questions section of the inquiry's website, it reads, The National Inquiry cannot investigate or reinvestigate cases of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and Two-Spirit LBTQ, or of women, girls, and Two-Spirit LBTQ who have experienced violence. Okay, so there will be no answers. There are no meetings or hardly any meetings with families. They're not even returning emails and phone calls to families. And there's a big bill for doing nothing while gallivanting across the country. What an inquiry. Who could have possibly have foreseen this all? I mean, besides former Prime Minister Stephen Harper, who was repeatedly called a racist for years, for refusing to hold an inquiry that he knew would do nothing more than employ hungry government bureaucrats. Someone else was against this inquiry, and his name is Wally Opal. He's a former BC Attorney General, and he was the head of an inquiry into missing and murdered Aboriginal women in BC in 2012. And when he was asked about a federal inquiry, he said, and I quote, Before we start embarking on a national inquiry, we have to ask ourselves, what will we learn from an inquiry? And I don't think that there's anything more that we can learn, end quote. By the way, Opal's inquiry only cost $10 million in total. We already know a lot about missing and murdered Aboriginal women from the Opal inquiry in BC. And we also know a lot from comprehensive RCMP reports and statistics. They are, like most female murder victims, meeting their end at the hands of people they know and most often intimate partners. Those same RCMP statistics show that Aboriginal men are the greater targets of violence and murder. In Manitoba, Aboriginal men are nine times more likely to be murdered than the rest of the population. Yet, Aboriginal men were excluded from the inquiry altogether. What kind of inquiry into Aboriginal deaths excludes the majority of the victims? You see, this whole mess was Trudeau's feminism meeting his pandering to Aboriginal voters, but not actually caring about Aboriginal voters, resulting in an expensive mess for all Canadians rife with wasted time, wasted money, and ignored and disappointed Aboriginal families. Think about this. 90 reserves in Canada have no potable water or are under a boil water advisory. They just can't turn on their taps and water comes out. It's a national disgrace. But Trudeau is allowing bureaucrats to wine and dine themselves across the country on the pretense of helping the families of the missing women from those very same communities. For The Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunreed. At The Rebel, we dig a little deeper into the fake feminism virtue signaling of the Trudeau government. To never miss a story, be sure to subscribe to our new Rebel Canada YouTube page.